Good evening. Good evening and welcome to Whitney Point Central School District's 82nd Annual Commencement Exercises. It is my great pleasure as principal of our high school to be the first to congratulate our class and congratulate the families this evening. As we come together as a community to celebrate and recognize the accomplishments of these graduates, I want to first take a moment to recognize and welcome first the superintendent of schools, Ms. Patricia Follett, members of our board of education, school administration, faculty, families, and of course our graduates. Tonight we gather to reflect upon and acknowledge the hard work perseverance, struggles, and victories that you've experienced over the last 13 years. Special friendships, memorable moments, and countless learning experiences have all helped to shape you and prepare you to take this important step in life, becoming a high school graduate. As a student attending Whitney Point Schools, each of you many years ago was given a gift. It began the day that you started kindergarten and that gift will continue to bring value to your life wherever your paths may lead you. This gift, of course, is the educational experience that you've had and the knowledge and the skills that you've gained while students in our district. Education has been, been called the great equalizer, and I truly believe that to be true. As citizens of the 21st century, your access to education, access to information, and knowledge is greater than any other time in history. And the current rate of change in our society is great. So graduates of 2018, my message is simple. Keep learning. Whatever your choice may be for the next step in your lives, whether it be school, whether it be military, whether it be going directly to work, keep learning. You have worked with your teachers and your families for 13 years to build a foundation to make that learning possible and you owe it to yourselves to continue with that. Next, I'd like to give something a try that was begun by my predecessor just about 10 years ago, and I understand has become a little bit of a tradition here at Whitney Point. Um, each of us here in the audience is here to recognize and congratulate and celebrate one of the fine young men and women up on the stage. So this evening, I'm gonna ask that when I count to three, before we get into our formal or our more formal part of the ceremonies tonight, that each of you in your loudest voice call out the specific name of the student that you're here to recognize. So before we settle in, if you could join me on the count of three. One, two, three. Wow. Okay. Now I've got a little bit better understanding why that has caught on. Thank you for participating. Once again, welcome. And I would like to next invite to the podium one of our graduates, Miss Elena Birchall. On behalf of the class of 2018, I would like to welcome families, faculty, and friends to this year's commencement ceremony. I would like to take a moment and thank the community. Your support, commitment, and dedication to us and to our school district has meant more to us than you'll ever know. Your selflessness and generosity has had a major impact on all our lives. I have seen students graduate from Whitney Point and embrace the opportunity to give back to the community community. I know the class of 2018 will do the same. You are everything good that can be said about a small town. To my classmates, looking back, as 13, uh, looking back on 13 years as a student of the Whitney Point school, school District, I realized one thing. We are all part of a team. We all bring something special and unique to the table. Some are athletes, some are musicians, some are artists, encouragers, and helpers, all vital and equally important. 
When you look at the whole picture, where would we be without each other? We started out trying not to make each other laugh and get in trouble during nap time, held each other's hands during the hard times, and celebrated with each other during the best of times. When we all do our jobs as a team, we are better as a whole. As we sit and reflect on our years with each other during the ceremony tonight, I challenge you to sincerely take a moment and think about your strengths and your dreams. You're all important, special, and have something unique to offer to the world. After today, when we walk out of this gym, we'll find new paths and join new teams and chase our dreams. I hope all of you reach your full potential and wish you the best of luck on becoming uniquely you. Always continue to move forward, but never forget where you began. Thank you, Elena, for that inspirational message. And next, I would like to introduce um, the superintendent of the school district, Ms. Patricia Follett. Thank you. Um, it is a privilege and a pleasure to welcome you to the 2018 Whitney Point graduation ceremony. This is a special time for the lives of our, in the lives of our graduates, their families, and friends. Um, I always think it's so wonderful be, to be in Whitney Point for exactly the reasons that Elena mentioned, because it is such a close-knit community. And so what I would like to do, just take uh, a few seconds for anybody who ever attended Whitney Point schools or graduated from Whitney Point schools, except for you guys, yeah, if you would just stand so we can see the kind of support there is that stays within our community. Thank you, thank you. Um, I think it's pretty impressive. So um, I came recently across a quote by J.K. Rowling that resonated with me, especially knowing that graduation season was upon us. J.K. Rowling, for those of you that may not know, is a novelist and author of the famous Harry Potter series. Our graduates are very familiar with her work as the first Harry Potter book was published in 1997 and they are the first class where the majority of the students were born three years later in the year 2000. As you might know, Rowling's had a, a lived a life, a rags to riches life story, and she went from living on state benefits in England to being the world's first billionaire author. After giving much of her earnings to charity, she lost her billionaire status, but still remains one of the wealthiest people in the world. To the class of 2018, although you have shared many of, your, of the same experiences, each of you comes to the stage with your own life story, and you will continue to follow along paths that will lead you through many life experiences. It is J.K. Rowling's quote that I would like to leave you with in regard to these experiences. She said, it is impossible to live without failing at something unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you fail by default. Now, I'm not telling you to go, I'm not going to tell you that failure is fun, but the knowledge that you have emerged wiser and stronger from setbacks means that you are ever after secure in your ability to survive. I hope you will celebrate the successes in your lives, become stronger due to the failures, always remember to reach out when you need help, and look to lend a helping hand to those who need it. Please join me in celebrating the lives of these unique and accomplished graduates. Thank you, Ms. Follett, for sharing those words of wisdom. Next, I will invite Ms. Kelly Perry and Mr. Benjamin Shear to the podium, and they will be sharing with us a vocal selection.
Thank you, Ben and Kelly. That was quite beautiful. Next, it is my pleasure to introduce this evening's keynote speaker who will be providing our commencement address. Mr. John Rizell is a community member and was a teacher in Whitney Point Central School District for 34 years, gaining the distinction of Teacher of the Year in 1990. After retiring, Mr. Rizell went on to serve on the Village Board of Trustees as mayor of Whitney Point for several terms and the Triangle T Town Council. He has worked tirelessly throughout these years as an advocate for the children and the students of our district. He is truly an example of a man who works on the behalf of others and who has had a tremendous impact on the community in which he lives. Please help me welcome Mr. John Rizell. Good evening. Be forewarned, I have never been accused of being a man of too few words. Mr. Sweeney strongly recommended that I keep this under four hours. Can't promise that. In college, I was a secondary education social science major, which certified me to teach social studies to students in seventh through twelfth grade. Began my career teaching in a little town the other side of Hancock called Foxhall. The school was so small that I was the high school social studies teacher. In September 1969, I came to Whitney Point, not to teach social studies, but to teach math. <laughs> I tried to take a piece of direction from my friends and my teachers. Now in the course of the year, all of the students first through 12th grade would come to the swimming pool with their respective phys ed teachers. Now it's kindergarten through 12. And they would receive a block of swimming instruction. Um, Marge Schwager, unfortunately not with us any longer. Many of you I'm sure knew Marge. Wonderful woman, wonderful teacher, very, very good with students. The first graders were about to begin their swimming instruction at the pool, and she said, I have to give you some advice. One, you talk too fast. You need to slow it down. You need to be very exacting and very specific in terms of giving instructions to these students as to what they can and cannot do when they come to the pool. Okay. 
So in comes the first first grade. Welcome, first graders. My name is Mr. Orzel, and you are here for swimming instruction. Now, you sit down on these benches in the lobby, you take off your shoes and your socks, you put your socks into your shoes, and then you put them onto the bench. Then you form two lines, boys in one line, girls in the other line. Mrs. Corella will give you a bathing suit, she'll give you a towel. Boys, you go into the boys' locker room, girls, you go into the girls' locker room. You take off all of your clothes, you put them into a locker, you put on the bathing suit, you go to the shower, and I will meet you out by the pool. Well, the class went pretty well, and we get to the end and discover that the boys, there were 12 of them, did exactly what I told them to do. They have taken off all of their clothes and put them into a locker, as in one locker. <laughs> now the fun begins. First grade boys just don't remember what they were wearing. <laughs> this is a fantastic blue shirt. Whose is this? No response. How about the red one? Pants, they were all pretty much blue jeans, as I remember. And the major problem was, well, undershorts. We've got from seemingly brand new brighty whiteies all the way down to not so new, not so bright, and not so white. <laughs> Call the elementary school nurse, what do I do? And she told me, send them home commando. <laughs> the next day, checking into the high school, there was a note in my mailbox that the superintendent of schools wants to speak to me, exclamation point, and that exclamation point says a lot. I can laugh at this now, couldn't laugh at it back then. 1974, I returned to the high school social studies classroom where I taught until I retired in the year 2000. I loved to teach. It's been 18 years since I've retired. What's happened in the 18 years that I've retired? You happened. You happened. Now I'm guessing most of you weren't even born in the year 2000. Or if you were born, you were in the very, very early stages of infancy. Um, over the course of time, we've had many societies that have what we refer to as rites of passage. Rite is in a ceremony. Rite of passage. What's the passage? The passage is from childhood to adulthood. Good example of that would end up being boys of the Jewish faith who spend weeks, they spend months, memorizing lengthy passages from the Torah, from Jewish scripture and text, who are going to be put to the test by rabbis. And if they succeed in passing this exam, they will now be declared men of the faith. They were boys of the faith, they're now men of the faith. They've gone from childhood to adulthood. During the Middle Ages, members of the noble class, barons and earls and dukes and marquises, even kings, Great emphasis upon having as many sons as possible. And these sons would go through this progression of starting as a page, advancing to a squire, and then, in a dubbing ceremony, they would be proclaimed knights. They would now be a noble man or a nobleman. There's a Western a Native American tribe that their rite of passage consists of building a lodge. It's kind of a hut. It's covered with very, very heavy animal hides. And inside this lodge, they have these huge beds of hot burning embers. These young Native American boys go in there. There's all these incantations and I guess what we would call dances. And then after some protracted period of time, they come out. They're 10 pounds lighter, kind of barbecued, but they're now men. Um, you're right of passage. You're in it. This is it. Whatever there was left of little boy or little girl in you when you processed into this ceremony, the thinking is that by the time you receive your diploma, all signed, sealed, and embossed, and then they have you stand, and it will be proclaimed to one and all that you have met the standards established by the state of New York, and you will duly be proclaimed graduates. You're going to move that tassel from one side of your mortarboard to the other, and soon after, you're going to go recessing out of here. Graduates and also adult, at least in theory. There's always a couple exceptions. After the ceremony, I'm sure, there's, there's going to be celebrating, and rightfully so. You may be going out to eat. You may be going home to some kind of small, intimate family uh, celebration, brothers and sisters and grandma and grandpa. I don't know. Maybe mom, mom and dad went out and rented you know, a circus tent 
200 tables, 8,000 chairs, and you're going to rave, rave, rave. And part of that will end up being, of course, the tradition of having a graduation cake. 18,233 and a half calories in every slice, eight inches of frosting. Honey, we're running out of food. It's all right, let them eat cake, graduation cake. You're going to be gifted. I graduated from Johnson City High School back in 1962. My major graduation present from my parents was a Smith Corona, Smith Corona used to be up in Cortland, a Smith Corona Sterling Portable Typewriter. Went off to college with me, followed me through my teaching career. I don't know how many reports and essays, quizzes, tests, and even final exams came out of that typewriter. I know none of you are getting one because Smith Corona doesn't make them anymore. Computers, maybe? Digital watches? You're going to get all types of cards, maybe Amazon gift cards. You'll get cards with hard, cold cash. I've got gifts for you, too. Best wishes. But the best wishes are aimed at you because you're going to be adults, not so much that you're going to be a graduate. First and foremost, and I'm going to qualify my wishes. I just don't give them out lightly. To those of you in this class who will make it a point to look and see, these are two different things. Be surprised how many people in the world look and never see anything. Those of you who will look and see that in this wonderful world, and it is a wonderful world, there's ugliness. There's hatred, there's violence, there's war, there's discrimination, there's bigotry, there's racism, there's poverty, there's hunger, there's disease. Ugliness has witnessed the ugliness that we've been experiencing this week with the situation down on the border. These people legally seeking asylum here in the United States because they fear for their lives and the lives of their children come here and they're greeted how? We take their children and put them in detention camps. Ugly to the point of being grotesque. If you will make it a point to look and see that there's ugliness, seeing is believing, and that's the first step toward eliminating that ugliness. If you will do that, my best wishes for you are that you will always be able to see boundless beauty. Glorious sunrises and sunsets, fields full of fireflies at night. Incidentally, this is the time of year for that. Butterflies during the day, buds that will open into blooms. You will be able to see beauty. After the long, bitter, bitter, bitter cold winter where everything is so dormant and still and seemingly lifeless to watch all of that and explode into the green of spring. And these hills will turn around and explode into the beauty of all those fall colors. I wish you the opportunity to be able to always see that. I've been fortunate that my wife and I have been able to travel a lot all over the world and to see a lot of things. The Great Wall of China and even walk sections of it. We've been to the top of the Eiffel Tower to look over the city of light and love. We've been to Moscow. We were to Red Square. We saw the Kremlin and all the treasures there. We rafted down the Colorado River with all those cathedral-like walls of the Grand Canyon. We've seen the snow-capped majesty of Mount Denali up in Alaska. We've seen many fine works of art. One of my favorites, or a lot of my favorites, are in them by the artist Michelangelo. His ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, his David, his Moses, his Pieta. You know, and I, I think, well, he's a master craftsman. I thought, well, you know, I'm a master craftsman too, to a certain degree. I've, I help make works of art, two of them to be exact, a daughter and a son. My wife did play part in that. Yeah, 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 but you see, his works of art are masterpieces. Well, my works of art are masterpieces too. His are priceless. Mine are priceless. And mine are alive and well and doing great things. His just sit around collecting dust. I wish you beauty. For those of you who will make it a point to listen and hear two different things, you will hear the moans and the groans and the pleas for help. Those who are in despair, those who are in need that you will hear that. And we don't need to go to Asia, we don't need to go to Africa or Latin America to find that. We can hear that right here in Whitney Point. If you will make it a point to listen and hear, my best wishes for you are that you will always be able to hear beautiful sounds. Beautiful sounds, orchestras, 
marching bands, uh, rock bands, uh, even rap. Well, anyway, you will be able to hear wonderful music. You will be able to hear the voices of people singing happy birthday to you. You will hear the voices of people rising to their feet in, in thunderous ovation for you. I wish you to hear that. I wish you to hear laughter, especially the laughter of children. Three, four, five-year-olds, women will, they break into just raucous laughter. Somebody turns around and burps, somebody passes gas, or somebody says, but, and they're just rolling all over the floor. And you can't help but laugh with them. I wish you the ability to be able to laugh at yourselves. You're gonna do silly, stupid things. Laugh at yourself. And probably most important of all, I wish you that you will always be able to hear those magic words from many, I love you. I truly love you. And last but not least, for you in this class who will make it a point to reach out and feel for others, especially family and friends, their ups and downs, all their, their, the, the problems they may end up being experiencing. They're good and they're bad. They're sad and they're glad. That if you can turn around and do that for them, they in turn around will feel for you. I wanna pat you on the back. I wanna shake your hand. You made that shot that won the game, that won the championship, that put the trophy in the showcase. You should be so proud. I'm glad for you, I'm proud of you. But I wanna pat you on the back and I wanna shake your hand when you take the shot and you miss. We lost the game and there is no trophy. But it was a fantastic game and it was worth watching you play. When, other, when, when you do good, people will turn around and congratulate you for that. You're employee of the month and you got a $500 bonus to go with that. I'm happy for you. At the same time, too, when you do bad, they'll feel for that. You got a ticket, a speeding a ticket. You were going 85 miles an hour, backing out of the driveway. Yes, I feel for you. I'm hoping that, I wish that, in the course of the journey of your life, when it gets to that point that you keep stubbing your toes, that you hit every pothole in the road, it seems to be that you always take the wrong turn and nothing is going right, that you decide you're gonna slam on the brakes, you're gonna take a break, you're gonna escape and you're gonna find comfort in an opioid pill, in a toke or a smoke, or God only knows how many joints and wash it all down with gallons of Jack Daniels. No, you aren't escaping and you aren't finding comfort. You're dancing with death. And it's my sincerest hope that should we get to that point, there will be many, if not many, a few, if not few, at least one that will extend both hands to help you. To those of you in this class who can't look and see, who can't listen and hear, and who can't reach out and feel for others, well, to you, I wish you the very best of luck. This has been a pleasure. Congratulations. I welcome you to adulthood. Thank you, Mr. Orzel. Next, to provide the salutatory address will be Miss Amy Standish Warfus. Good evening. I want to start off by thanking everyone for joining the class of 2018 and one of the biggest moments of our lives. I'd like to give a special shout out to my friends and family for supporting me in everything I do. More specifically, I want to thank my siblings, Austin, Gracie, and Owen, for being a source in competition in everything we do and for being my lifelong best friends. Most importantly, I want to thank my parents. Mom and Dad, thank you for putting up with me since I was a kid, throwing temper tantrums over socks, and for believing in me when I didn't even believe in myself. Also, I'd like to take a moment to especially recognize my mom, Mary Stanish Warpus, 
along with other faculty members, for all their hard work and dedication put into this ceremony. My parents have said many interesting things during my 18 years of life, some sticking out more than others. Don't get me wrong, my mom has said a lot of things that have stuck with me, mostly yelling at me to do the laundry. Just kidding. Um, but my dad, the man of many words, for those of you who know Al, has said what will always stick in my brain, and I can hear him saying it now. When I was younger, every morning before school, when getting on the bus, he would always say to me and my siblings, be a leader, not a follower. Over the, over the years, the way I viewed that quote has changed. Maybe I'm just looking into it too deeply, thank you English teachers, and all he meant was the typical, don't jump off a bridge if your friend does. But now, as we are all taking a big step in our lives, it means a lot more. Now that we are moving on from high school, we have control of our own destiny. We, the class of 2018, are the leaders of our own lives and have the power to change the way we live and what we do. I've always struggled with figuring out what I wanted to do with my life. I felt like I had an image to uphold because I was a part of the top 10. Top 10 or not, if being some fancy pants job isn't what you want to do, don't do it. You are the leader of your own life and you can do what you want with it. Whether you're going to college, taking a gap year, going into the military, or going straight to work, life is what you make of it, so why not do what makes you happy? You don't have to follow the expectations of everyone else, do what makes your eyes light up and what makes you get up in the morning. And if you struggle to find that, keep exploring and giving yourself options to work with. It's hard to know exactly what you want to do with your life at 17 or 18 years old. I know a lot of adults who have graduated from college and have good jobs who still don't know what they want to do. And that's okay. It gives you even more reason to explore what the world has to offer. Even if you come to a few bumps in the road, which you will, don't give up. Remember, you are the leader of your own life. You don't have to follow what someone else wants you to do or what you think you're required to do. Find the thing that makes you the happiest and chase after it. So with that, I wish you the best of luck, class of 2018. Thank you, Amy. And to present our valedictorian address for this evening, Ms. Kelly Perry. Good evening. I would like to start out by thanking everyone who came out tonight and I would like to thank teachers, administrators, friends, and family. Not only did they help me on my journey through high school, but they also helped everyone sitting in the chairs beside me as well. I'd also like to congratulate everyone on their stellar achievements and wish all of you the best of luck in your future endeavors. That said, I'd like to speak a little bit on the importance of hard work, the ability to and importance of dreaming, and also the essence of family. As many people here know, high marks do not come from intelligence only. Hard work is the most important thing one can keep in mind in regard to high achievement. A quote coined by high school basketball coach Tim Notke reads, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. This reigns true at all levels of life. In order to be extraordinary, one must exceed expectations. An application of this idea that many of us found throughout high school is studying for the blasphemous regents exams and writing essays to perfection. Every test I had was preceded by at least 10 practice, practice exams and every essay ten, eight drafts. Mr. Marcotte can vouch for me when I say that hard work pays off. In your future endeavors, I beg you to be extraordinary. Remember that hard work comes with a price and that price is integrity, perseverance, and passion. If one has integrity, perseverance, and passion, success is inevitable. The ability to dream and the importance of dreaming are also vital to success. Without dreams, there aren't goals, and without goals, there is not success. When setting goals, remember to stay true to yourself and your desires so as to not let anyone change you. Dreams allow us to stay true to ourselves. They inspire us to be extraordinary, and ultimately, they make us better people. One famous example of the importance of dreams is Martin Luther King Jr., 
and his dream of civil rights. He once said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Don't ever back down when you want to follow your dreams because success is not far behind you when you reach your goals. Success follows action. Lastly, success is guaranteed with the support and love of family. I want to thank all of the people in my life who I call family, especially my parents, Don and Nina Perry, my very supportive aunts, uncles, and cousins, and my best friend and sister, Katy Perry. They're sitting in the back, they're in the second row, shout out. Uh, without them, I would not be standing here speaking to you all today. Family to me is the most important aspect of life and the most important gift that could be given to a human. Not only do these people congratulate me in my accomplishments, but they hold me when I'm down, they feed me inspiration, they laugh with me until I cry, except the time when my sister Katie pushed me under the stove, in which case she laughed at me while I cried. They always love me, they tell me when I'm wrong, and they don't ever make me feel unwanted. The same goes for all of you. We are a family that will be torn apart in about an hour and a half, or at the end of the day, or at the end of the summer. But we have made each other better people in the end, and I want to thank all of you for that. In closing, I plead that all of you never forget your roots. Whitney Point is a supportive, close-knit family that is full of pride for each and every student that comes through. I want to congratulate you again, class of 2018, and I pray that in the future, you lead with kindness, act with love, and dream with passion. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. And again, congratulations to Kelly and Amy uh, for securing the first and second spots in the senior class this year. The next part of our program, uh, we'll be conferring uh, graduation awards. Uh, before I do that, I just want to remind people where to take a look in the programs today. We recently also had an award assembly where many other awards and deserving students are listed. Um, but we will begin next with, the, with our graduation awards. First being presented will be the Whitney Point American Legion Post Number 974 Awards, and they will be presented by Commander of the Whitney Point Legion Post, Ms. Suzanne Williams. Good evening. Congratulations. award is for most improved female Taylor Knapp this is a $500 award Next award is also a $500 award. This is for the most improved male, James Winter. Outstanding boy in the senior class. This is a $100 gift or $100 scholarship and uh, a medal for Evan Masley. <laughs> and we have $100 each for our four graduates going into the military. We have Garrett Carter.
they will also be given uh, membership for the time they were in this, uh, while they're in the school. Uh, Adam Combs. Cora French. And Jacob Kim. Thank you, and once again, Whitney Point American Legion congratulates all the graduates. Thank you. Next will be the Whitney Point American Legion Women's Auxiliary Award, and those will be presented by Ms. Vivian Brame Gardner. Good evening, graduates. Congratulations. A little premature, but it's there, okay? Tonight, I am presenting awards for nursing. The American Legion has been proud to be able to distribute scholarships in nursing uh, to various members of graduating classes uh, since 1920. So we've had 99 years of doing this presentation. So it's very a big honor to be here tonight to be able to do these awards. The first one is awarded to Morgan Richards. Uh, the second award was going to go to Deanna, I'm going to massacre this, Sanchen? <laughs> okay. Okay. Always remember as graduates of the class of 2018, go forward and serve your community, serve your veterans, do anything that you can to be able to help make this a better world. Congratulations. And the Sons of the American Legion Chuck Franklin Memorial Scholarship will be presented by Mr. Robert Gardner. Congratulations to the class of 2018. The Sons of the American Legion is represented tonight by myself. I'm also a member of the Legion, but I can be a dual member because of my father and my grandfather's service. The Chuck Franklin Memorial Scholarship is given to a graduating senior who has shown strong desire for history, character, and very much hard work. The recipient of this year's 2018 Chuck Franklin Memorial Scholarship Award of $100 is Benjamin Shear. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations again to the class of 2018 and all those going into the military, we thank you for your service. Thank you. <laughs> Next is the Whitney Point Rotary Club Student Award. They will be presented this evening by President of Rotary, Mr. Burt McCullough. Superintendent Collette, Principal Sweeney, parents, friends.
friends and family, and certain, certainly graduates. Uh, as the president of the Whitby Point Rotary Club, I have the distinct pri privilege of presenting to several graduating seniors cash awards. Our student award fund, which began in 86 with about $2,000 in our kitty, an award of $200, is supported by donations from the community, which funds are then invested in only the earnings are awarded each year. It is reinforced through research that involvement in community and volunteering are vital and important in making the transition from, from childhood to adulthood. Receipts of the student award from the Whitney Point Rotary Club need not be academic or athletic all-stars. They do, however, have to be Whitney Point graduating seniors and have the demonstrated to Rotary service above self by contributing to their community during the years in high school. The fund totally, uh, currently totals more than $270,000. Again, this money is given by Rotary members and community members who want to leave something behind, which allows us to award a total of $10,000 this evening. And along with, this is a side corporation from our regular Rotary Club, which also does a lot of community activities, a lot for cancer and uh, school activities, the exchange program, and so on. This is a separate corporation set up and is run by professional uh, financial managers. Okay, $1,500. And the way that we award these, the seven members of the team who look at the application do not know the name of that person. The first page is taken off. The application is given to them only with community service on it. We don't know who it's going to. I do now, but that's how we do it so that we are not influenced by outside things. Number five, $1,500, Caitlin Marie Bowman. $1,500, Evan Maslin. $2,000, I've heard this name before, Kelly Perry. $2,000, Emily Salvermini. $3,000, Sarah Dewey. Just, a, just as a side note, you're all graduates point getting out in the world and you may think Whitney Point is the hit community can I really do it well Whitney Point the education that you have can do it for you I grew up on a farm we had five kids in the family three went to Cornell one to Potsdam one to Missouri and we did it and I know that you can do it just have faith in yourself and follow your dreams thank you Thank you, Mr. McCullough, and thank you to the Rotary for their great generosity. Next will be the Whitney Point Teachers Association Scholarship. This is awarded, this will be presented by high school math teacher, Ms. Teresa Delgado. the Whitney Point Teachers Association scholarships are awarded to those graduating seniors who best exemplify the values of our school's professional staff with a preference for students planning on entering the field of education. Four $400 awards will be presented to Anna Dickerson.
Evan Maslin. <laughs> Kelly Perry. <laughs> and Emily Yelch. Next is Henry M. and Frida G. Baldwin Scholarship. This is awarded to a senior who plans a career in public service, exhibits good citizenship, and participates in student government. One $500 award is presented to Kelly Perry. Prentice, Prentice Scholarship this evening will be presented by Mr. Jason Prentice. Congratulations to the class of 2018. My name is Jason Prentice. I am the son of Robert Prentice. Uh, this evening we will be giving out two $1,000 awards. The Prentice Scholarship. It's awarded by the family of Roy and Jesse Prentice, my grandparents, Robert Prentice, my father, Sharon V. Prentice Billings, my aunt, the late Richard H. Prentice, and the late John R. Prentice, my uncles, all of whom attended the Whitney Point School District. Awarded to the deserving students planning to pursue a degree in the field of engineering or human health care. Again, $2,000 awards. The first award, Anna. Dickerson. The second $1,000 award is presented to Emily Selvamini. Good luck, students. Whitney Point Alumni Scholarship this evening will, will be presented by Mr. Ed Driscoll. Good evening and congratulations. I want to follow up on a remark that Bert McCulloch made and Mr. Roosevelt. Because we're in Whitney Point, you got the world at your hands. Uh, Alumni Association, we have every year a banquet and we honor alumni. We have three categories, uh, alumni and uh, senior, the community people and uh, employees. And you people take your parents to go out and look at that wall, the people we've honored that come from Whitney Point and the amazing things they've done. Don't let, because you're Whitney Point, don't let that hold you back. Keep going. Uh, and. Uh, we also have a bake sale if we raise money to give this scholarship fund. And we have a lot of volunteers and like that, but we have a lot of fun doing it, selling and talking to people at Greg's Market. Uh, but our scholarship this year goes to Kelly Perry. The Jesse H. Baker Scholarship is awarded to students who reside in Broome County and have demonstrated quality work and outstanding character, along with a desire for higher education. Two $1,900 awards will be presented to Anna Dickerson and Emily Salvamini.
Bradley Alden Memorial Scholarship. Joining us this evening for, to present will be Miss Sherry Alden. Good evening and congratulations class, you guys made it. Uh, just a brief history about this scholarship fund was set up in loving memory of my son. He was a Whitney Point graduate in 2005. He went on to attend University at Buffalo to study in the fields of biology and biotechnology. The year he graduated is the year you guys started school. The first year we gave out this scholarship, I said to the class that was graduating that year, many of those students knew Bradley and many of them were his friends. This year I can say one of you knew Bradley because you were his cousin. <laughs> um, so things change and with this scholarship that was set up for Bradley's memory, is being awarded to a student who exhibits an attitude of mentoring, is always a team player no matter what the task, and is committed to helping others. The student must be planning to attend college and study in the field of either science, history, or math, which were Bradley's favorite subjects. I'd like to award a $500 scholarship to Alexis Henderson. The second scholarship is being awarded to a student planning to attend college in the fall and study in the fields of science, math, or history. Our second scholarship award for $250 is awarded to Noah Hust. Clute Memorial Scholarship is awarded to students in the top third of their senior class. Scholarships are based on scholarship, character, and complete and their complete high school record. Awarded $200, Anna Dickerson and Emily Yalch. $300, Margaret Biondi. <laughs> Awarded $350, Lyra Campo. Awarded $400, Lindsay Howell, Alyssa Ellerson, and Emily Salvamini. and awarded $500. Kelly Perry, Amy Standish Warpus, and Evan Maslin. The 
Ricotta Wood Scholarship is awarded to worthy students to pursue a post-secondary who are to pursue a post-secondary career in any of the following areas: the teaching of English, veterinary science, mathematics, and health sciences. This scholarship is renewable for four years for $1,250 awards, again, that are renewable for four years, are presented to Margaret Biondi, Jacob Craver, Amy Standish Warpus, and Emily Yalch. The Charles and Mary Lou Game Memorial Scholarship, awarded to a deserving student who plans to continue to participate and remain active in the area of music in college and beyond. One $500 award will be presented to Kelly Perry. The Timeson Memorial Scholarship, Awarded to a student continuing in his or her edu education after high school in a medical or health service field, is community minded, and has an interest or experience with volunteering in their school, community, or greater community. One $500 award will be presented to Lyra Campo. Mary Ellen Lane Memorial, Skip Memorial Scholarship. This is awarded to a senior student with a good work ethic, planning to continue with his or her education. One $500 award will be presented to Anna Clark. Coach Halloran Scholarship, awarded to one senior boy athlete involved in varsity sports that displayed leadership and good sportsmanship. One $500 award would be presented to Dylan Dunham. and the Whitney Point Sportsman's Association Scholarship, awarded to a student majoring in conservation or a related area and going into higher education. One $500 award will be presented to Dylan Dunham. The next portion of our program this evening will be the introduction of the top 10 seniors and that will be done by Mr. Jeffrey Isaacs. Good evening. Tonight marks the most memorable time for our graduates and their families and the rest of us too. We're all very proud of each and every one of our students and their accomplishments. We'd like to acknowledge and thank all of our parents, guardians, grandparents, and significant others for their support and enduring efforts throughout the years. You should be extremely proud this evening. It gives us great pleasure and honor to present to you our top 10 achieving students for the class of 2018. Students and parents, when you hear your name, please rise to be recognized, and if you could, please remain standing through the top 10. Number 10. Morgan Richards, daughter of Colin and Shelley Richards. Uh, the activities that uh, the most proud to have participated in during high school were National Honor Society, Girls State, New Visions Health Academy, volleyball, track and field, International Foreign Language Club, Club. And Morgan's post-secondary plans are to attend SUNY Broome 
of nursing major. Number nine, Sarah Dewey, daughter of Linda Dewey. Nas uh, National Honor Society and tri -M Music Honor Society, member of all of our bands, chorus, cheerleading, and track and field. And Sarah's post-secondary plans are to attend SUNY Broome, liberal arts major. Number eight, Noah Hoost, son of Earl and Sherry Hoost. Football, baseball, and the uh, art club. And Noah's post-secondary plans are to attend SUNY Broome, his physical therapy major. Number six, and we have a tie at number six. That's why I'm jumping. Number six with a tie. We have Emily Salvamini, daughter of Andrew and Cheryl Salvamini. <laughs> National Honor Society and National Technical Honor Society for New Visions program. Girl State, Indoor and Outdoor Track, Volleyball, International Foreign Language Club, Art Club, and student council, and Emily's post-secondary plans are to attend SUNY Geneseo, biology major, and the other tie here for number six, we have Alyssa Ellerson, daughter of Jamie and Allison Ellerson. <laughs> tri -M Music Honor Society, member of all of our bands and choruses, and soccer, and Alyssa's post-secondary plans are to attend SUNY Broome, liberal arts major. And now number five, Lindsay Howell, daughter of Mark and Raquel Howell. <laughs> National Honor Society, lacrosse, soccer, track and field, art club, SAD, yearbook, and robotics club. And Lindsay's post-secondary plans are to attend SUNY Broome, liberal arts major. At number four, Alexis Henderson, daughter of Ronald and Rebecca Henderson. <laughs> National Honor Society and National Technical Honor Society for New Visions program. Mender member of all of our bands, soccer, SAD, and student council. And Alexis's post-secondary plans are to attend Tompkins Cortland Community College pre-pharmacy program. Number three, Evan Maslin, son of Brent and Lynette Maslin. <laughs> National Honor Society and National Technical Honor Society for New Visions program. Boy State, Tucker, International Foreign Language Club, High School Challenge, Band and Marching Band, Peer Tutor, SAD and Student Council. And Evan's post-secondary plans are to attend the University of North Florida International Relations and Economics major. Number two, Amy Standish Warpus, daughter of Alan and Mary Standish Warpus. <laughs> National Honor Society, Ryla, soccer, basketball, lacrosse, high school challenge, and our club, and Amy's post-secondary plans are to attend SUNY Broome, marketing major, and number one, Kelly Perry, daughter of Donald and Nina Perry. <laughs> National Honor Society, National Technical Honor Society for New Visions program, and the Tri-M Music Honor Society. Member of all of our bands and choruses, volleyball, track and field, High School Challenge, International Foreign Language Club, RILA, Drama Club, Cheerleading, and Student Council. And Kelly's post-secondary plans are to attend SUNY Broome, nursing major. Congratulations to our top 10 and our class of 2018.
And finally, we are at the portion of our program that will include the awarding of diplomas. Students in the front row would please rise. <laughs> Kelly Ann Perry. Evan Lucas Maslin. <laughs> Lindsay B. Howell. <laughs> Alyssa N. Ellerson. <laughs> Sarah. G. Dewey. <laughs> Caitlin M. Bowman. Elena R. Virgil. <laughs> Jacob J. Craver. <laughs> Anna Rose Dickerson. Cameron Alexander Angelo. <laughs> Cynthia J. Ayers. <laughs> Megan L. Bacchus. Corey A. Bacchus Ellis. Zachary Joseph Barr. Jacqueline Ballard. Tori Lynn Ballard. Melissa Lynn Beach. Chelsea Lynn Beebe. <laughs> Haley Nicole Bennett. <laughs> Benjamin Paul Bidwell. Margaret M. Biondi. <laughs> 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 
Lance Boyce. Jennifer B. Brewster Hulbert. Christina Joanne Brown. Max M. Caniff. Garrett C. Carter. Caleb L. Sempa. Anna Nicole Renee Clark. Carly Koish. Adam L. Combs. Haley S. Comparetta. Lyra D. Campo. Rebecca L. Croft. Caleb M. Dupe. Dawson W. Driscoll. <laughs> Ellen R. Dunham. <laughs> Ian Lee Etson. Lisa Marie Ellerson. <laughs> Emily Yvonne Ellis. <laughs> Kayla M. Everett. Gavin D. Fish.
Cora Joanna French. Cody T. Frost. Connor M. Gates. Abigail Autumn Griswold. Sierra A. Hand. Dylan John Harford. Dawn A. Harford. Amy May Standish Warpus. Alexis Nicole Henderson. Emily Michelle Salvamini. Noah Ray Hoost. Morgan Lee Richards. Zaria L. Ansari. Jack L. Ellis. Landon B. Jecker. Molly Catherine Tasber. Jeremiah W. Holcomb. <laughs> Yamik N. Kendrick. <laughs> Marie A. Kenyon. Jacob A. Kim. <laughs> Jocelyn Renee Kim.
Taylor Joe L. Knapp. Nicholas Langton. Sarah Lynn A. Lee. Shane T. Lothridge. Allison E. Martin. Brian M. Martin. Keith M. Maxwell. Alexander McNeil. Griffin P. Michkowski. Megan Elizabeth Mahalko. Brady Scott Miller. Travis R. Minor. Jacob J. Purse. Jace M. Piercy. <laughs> Justin M. Poff. Ryan J. Randall. <laughs> Angela L. Roselle. <laughs> Diana Oksana Sanishin. Benjamin D. Shear. Victoria Marie Schrager.
Brandon Smith. Vincent D. Stanton. Lindsay Marie Switzer. Zachary L. Tyler. Caden Tayo. Jillian Clara Tayo. Tiffany Q. Underwood. <laughs> Brianna Volts. <laughs> Alexander S. Watson. Colton Watson. Alexa M. Wheeler. James D. Winchell. Emily J. Yalch. Austin M. Yesaluski. And next will be presentation of the class by Ms. Follett. See if you would all rise. Okay, so I have this question every year. Are you ready? Absolutely. Okay. With the authority granted to me by the state of New York, I now pronounce you Whitney Point Central School District graduates. You may, <laughs> you may turn your tassels. And I officially present to you the class of 2018. Give them a round of applause.
Thank you, Ms. Follett. This evening's closing meditation will be offered by Mr. Evan Maslin. Before I begin, I would like to thank all the speakers for their inspirational remarks this evening. It's also extremely hot in here, so I'm going to try and talk as fast as Amy would, if that's even possible, um, so we can all get out of here. Now, it is my pleasure to be speaking to all of you tonight as your peer, friend, and president. I would like to begin by thanking a number of people who have been critical to my development, both as a student and as a person. First, my family. I would like to thank my mom and dad for always pushing me to be my best. My sister, Emma, for being my biggest fan. My brother, Holden, for helping me develop my diplomatic skills. My grandparents for showing me the importance of compassion. And the rest of my extended family for their continuous support over the years. I would also like to thank the school administration, as well as all of my teachers, for their continuous support. Now, my friends. The first person I would like to thank tonight sadly couldn't be here because he had to return home. Nevertheless, many of you know Marcelli. He made a tremendous impact on me this past year, and to keep it short, he is truly the epitome of a friend. And if he was here, he would probably be asking me what epitome means. So I thank him for that. To my friend Cameron, who took a year-long vacation, left me here, and still somehow manages to graduate alongside me, thank you for your years of companionship. Finally, Morgan. Morgan, thank you for such an interesting friendship, to say the least. To be honest, I wasn't sure if it was going to last this long, especially given that it started by you yelling at me to take my feet off your desk in fourth grade. And to the rest of my friends, all of you on this stage, I remain equally thankful. It goes without saying that you all have been an outstanding class. Now I ask you to think about the remarkable things you will do in the future. It's one thing to be popular or talented or influential in a small town like Whitney Point. The real world, the place you are about to enter, is entirely different. You will be challenged to excel and to stand out at a much greater level than you ever have in the past. Though it is imperative that you persevere and tackle the barriers that stand in your way head on. Make yourself a promise right now. Promise yourself that you will not settle. Push the boundaries, go after what you want because I know, your family knows, and most importantly, you know, that the goals and aspirations you have are achievable if and only if you pursue them without reservation. Finally, success is not one thing, single thing. Success is purely what you deem it to be. There are multiple paths that can lead you to success, whether you are attending a junior college, a four-year university, a trade school, entering the workforce, or pursuing an honorable career in the armed forces, no matter your path, no matter what others say, I encourage you to pursue what will make you happy. Because in my book, doing what makes you happy is the definition of success. There's no question your accomplishments this far have earned you the respect of your fellow classmates, teachers, and families. You've made them proud. And now as I conclude my final official act as your president, I encourage you to go out and make them even prouder. Congratulations, class of 2018. Thank you, Evan, and thank you, class of 2018, um, for being my first senior class as a first-year principal. I truly did enjoy working with you. It's been a pleasure. Um, on a practical end, as we leave tonight, don't forget to pick up your envelopes that have your actual diplomas in them in the library afterward. I want to thank everybody for joining us this evening. And before I close, I do want to um, thank the people really who are responsible for the heavy lifting to make this such a nice ceremony tonight, uh, Ms. Teresa Grubham and Mrs. Mary Standish Warpus. Okay, and if everybody in the audience would please stay in their seats as we have our recessionals, we're going to bring our seniors out of the gymnasium first.